right, let's see if we're on now. You guys here? Anybody on here? What's going on? What's happening? There we go. What's happening? Woo All right. I'm glad we're getting people on here. Um, give me a second here. What's going on? So, as the title states, we are doing uh, VCDS light training today. Um, what's going on, everybody? So, VCDS light. I'm going to close this really quick. Oh, All right, there we go. So today we're going to be learning how to use VCDS Lite. It's very important. Uh, if you guys ever have it, it's super cool. You just need an OBD2 cable, USB. Make sure it's one of these uh, uh, VAG KKL cables. Uh, these are not authentic. These will not uh, use up a VIN number or use really really in-depth functions with VCDS but this if you have a laptop and you have the internet you can download VCDS it's a hundred percent free for VCDS Lite that tool this cable has 20 bucks on Amazon um, plus the VCDS which is free in a car a mark IV uh, in general um, Okay, this cable right here will read, VCDS Lite will read more information than any cheap little OBD2 cable that you'll buy online. I'm just telling you this right now. It will read everything. Uh, Euro Gang, uh, we can talk about that later. Um, I have more laptop shipping out. I ran out and I had to set up more. So I know I'm down to like four or five more people. So you might be one of them. We'll figure it out uh, later in the uh, later today because this is strictly for VCDS training. Uh, I don't want to be kind of sidetrack myself on that, so bear with me. We'll talk later about that, okay? If you don't mind. <laughs> uh, so back to VCDS and a cheap twenty dollar cable. This is probably the best investment you'll ever get, ever, for your VW Mark IV, uh, Mark III, pretty much anything. In the 2006 and older, this cable and the VCDS Lite is phenomenal. It's one of the best tools you'll ever have to diagnose, mess around, and just learn more information than you'll ever get out of anything that you buy online right now. So without further ado, let's do some training. Let's learn how to install it, set up the cable, and get you going before you even get this plugged into a car. So. Number one, obviously, buy a serial cable, I mean a VCA, OBD2 cable, and I'll show you guys again. Um, these are, this is the model, or what it should look like. It should have VAG, KKL on it. This is the one that I'm currently using. You guys can see that. There you go. Super important, okay? So I already have mine plugged in. You'll see it's already was powered on, <laughs> but there you go. So when it's powered, you should have a little light like that. Pretty straightforward. Okay. So your next step is to install VCDS Lite. So let's get you there going. Super easy, super quick. I'm going to minimize my screen here. Um, so you guys can see everything that's going on. All right. We're going to open up another tab here. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to open this up. I'm going to open up another window. That way my other tab doesn't go away. And then we're going to program this other tab really quick so you guys can see all the, what's going on, okay?
All right. So in your Google search bar, literally type in VCDS light. It should be the very first link that you guys see on here. Okay. It should say by Ross Tech, nothing else. Okay. You're going to scroll all the way down. You're going to click on download. All right. That's it. Don't touch anything else. All right, guys. Do not click on anything else. We're done with that. Once you have that done, okay. We're going to install it and we're going to set up the OBD2 cable next, okay? So I'm going to show you guys the installer. on here that's not gonna work aye, aye. okay this will work better there we go so once you download it and you install it um do I have it on here I don't have it on here. <laughs> I got to put it on here. Yes, David, it is live. I'm going through the whole process really quick because I forgot to download something. My bad. So here's VCDS Lite. We're going to double click it. We're going to hit yes. Now this is for everybody starting from scratch who doesn't have a laptop that if you're a Patreon member, you get one. But if not, it's okay. We're installing it. There's nothing special right here. We're going to hit finish and hit run VCDS light. All right. So here's the next step for you guys. All right. This is what becomes extra vital. So when you guys are on this screen. Okay. So when you guys are on this screen and you see this icon, um, these options already show up. What's going to matter the most, and I'll show you, is when you go to options, okay, you'll see these four options right here, okay? COM 1, 2, 3, and 4. We need to assign that COM port to the cable itself, okay? Very, very vital, because if not, this is not going to work. So, what you need to do to do that is you're going to close VCDS. All right. If you're on Windows, you can hit the Windows X key. And you'll see right here, Device Manager. And it should be under Ports, so COM and LPT. All right. If you scroll down, the name of this device is Serial CH340. Now, right now, I already assigned it COM port number one, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So what we're going to do is double click the item and you're going to get its properties and settings. Right next to it, there's four, uh, what, three, four, five tabs. You're going to click on port settings, all right? We're going to click on advance and you're going to see the communication ports right here, aka COM port number. Now there's a huge list of them. However, VCDS Lite only supports COM 1, one through 4. So Remember that, so you need to click on, right now I have three, four, five, six, and seven in use, but I got one and two empty. So I'm gonna use number one, hit okay, okay, and we're gonna exit out device manager. If, and only if everything works correctly, okay, uh, 
um, VCDS will actually pick it up. So let's open up VCDS. I gotta open up. I have to have uh, the background browser running because uh, I gotta read your guys' comments if you guys have anything. Okay, bear with me. We're gonna go options. Okay. Now we want to test the communication port. We want to make sure VCDS, the laptop, and the cable all talk as one. So we did decide on COM port number one. All right. So there should be a button here that says test. If everything is successful, you should say port status OK and interface not found. Now, the reason why the interface isn't found, it's not plugged into a car. It needs to be plugged into a car. So if you got this far, you're pretty much 50% of the way there before everything is 100% successful. Now, I got my keys right here. I'm going to go bring my Mark IV over. And we're going to do some, uh, some COM port testing to make sure everything works. So let's get it going. You guys can check out the backyard too. All right, um, I'm going to bring the Mark IV over, so give me guys a minute, be right back. I'm going to try to bring the Mark IV and park it over here, right in between these cars, uh, so that way we can have a pretty close um, test, so... All right, if you guys are still here, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure to tell me everything's working good. Just give me a thumbs up. You guys can hear me and see pretty much what I see on the screen before I walk away. Give me a thumbs up. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Be right back.
right now. <laughs> I really did think I was, was going to be able to fit in there, but I couldn't. I didn't want to move the dumpster too much. All right, so we're going to do it over here. <laughs> So the way that we're going to be able to do this, obviously, you know, you don't need to see the inside of what I'm doing, but I'm going to explain to you guys pretty much as I best can in the best amount of detail I can uh, what we have to do. So remember, we already got VCDS port configured and everything. So next step is to plug it into the car and then run the interface. So that's pretty much it. That's the only reason why I brought the car over so I can plug it in. So give me a minute, guys. The next big thing is to make sure the car is in the on position, the ignition, all right? You might as well air it out. <laughs> I mean, it looks good air out, right? <laughs> All right. So now that we have it plugged into our car, hello, hello, hello. So. Our next step is to get VCDS lights to work. Now, if everything works the way it's supposed to, we should be go we should be flawless in this process. So, bear with me here. How about that? That looks pretty good, don't you think? Yeah, I think that works. So, there we go. 
trying to keep the sun. All right, guys. So, Rob, we, we can talk about that later. That's not a thing we're doing, doing right now. We're learning about VCDS, all right? So now that we have VCDS open, we have our car ignition uh, key on, and then we pretty much have the OBD2 cable plugged in. If we go to options and we test the COM port, you'll notice it's taking longer. It's going to take a little bit longer than normal. And you'll see right here, port status, okay. Interface found. Everything's passed through. So everything we need is perfect. Obviously, it recognizes that with the fact that we do not have a Rostec cable, which is okay. We're learning how to use diagnostic software for our general wear and tear. Rostec, um, if you had the full license, you could do so much. You can reprogram stuff. We're not learning how to reprogram. We're learning how to read and understand how the VCDS lights works for us. So we can actually read trouble codes that are a lot more difficult to read than a normal car like a, a OBD2 reader that everybody buys for like 20, 30 bucks with a Bluetooth and uses your phone. That stuff works, but it's garbage. It doesn't give you like proper information. It doesn't give you live readouts as well um, that are free, put it that way. <laughs> so now that it detected the proper port and it understands the interface and everything, we want to hit the save button, okay? That's going to allow us to scan the car now. Now that everything's reading correctly and understanding what's going on, we can now officially scan the car for any codes. So um, there's a couple automatic functions, or we can go by module. And you, you can see that on here on the screen. Uh, it tells you exactly what it's telling you on the screen. We got our select control module, auto scan, control module finder, OBD2 functions, applications, and program options. Today, we all we need to do is click on select control module okay now as we select a control module now we have all these other functions okay so it gives us the general information on the screen which is very very important because general information means uh, what really matters to us the day-to-day -day basis uh, what's going to show up more often and what we're going to end up using pretty much more of as when we're working um, so we're going to click on engine, okay, and it's going to read our VIN number. It's going to read pretty much the ECU. It already knows what motors in the car, everything. That's what's super cool about VCDS lights uh, or just Rostec in general. It's it's insane, like how much information it already gave me for free. Like I didn't pay a single dollar. I have my own laptop. I have everything. Okay. So now that I read the information, you'll see this little um, turn thing right here. Um, that kind of uh, David Kane, yes, it will work on an Audi again, but it has to be two thousand and like six and older. Okay, so it's kind of like a um, uh, what's the word? Um, it has to be a Mark IV generation Audi, put it that way. It should work just fine because what happens is that we went from OBD2 and then uh, Audis did go a little bit further in the market and they went to OBD11 a lot sooner than Mark IV. Uh, OBD11 didn't go to the Mark V generation of cars. Uh, okay. So now that we're in VCDS and we got um, pretty much uh, updated here from where we need to be. So we want to look if there's any fault codes. Uh, fault codes. Uh, my car. Pretty much has no codes. My Mark IV. I know it's kind of weird. There's a car with no codes. But my car literally has no codes. It's awesome. <laughs> That's what a proper tune does for you. All right. So uh, if you have a printer set up or anything like that, you can print from it. So... Um, David, it might be, again, it might be, um, 
Oh, crap. You guys can't see the second window that I'm on. Hold on. Hold on. That's weird. Okay, we might have to do it a different way so this works better for you guys. I gotta do the desktop capture because it's not capturing the uh, the window correctly. I did not know that. That was weird. I was wondering why you guys couldn't see anything on the screen. All right, we're going to start from the beginning because uh, it messed up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 2.0T won't work. Uh, that's OBD 11. So um, this should work better now for you guys um, so you guys can see this on the screen. Uh, one more time. So we're going to correct select control module. You'll see here all the functions you have available. We're gonna to go to engine. It's gonna read my VIN, the engine code, and the ECU all at once, which is super cool. This is one of my favorite features about uh, VCDS Lite for free, okay? So now it's gonna check my fault codes if I have any. There isn't any here, which is good because that means I don't got any issues with my engine or my, pretty much my base functions of my motor is it's working fine. And you have an option here to clear codes as well, right? So next thing is, we're not gonna do uh, measuring blocks yet because uh, those are very in depth. Uh, we're gonna give you guys a generic walkthrough with that, but that's gonna, because we need to get the car running to do that, okay? We're gonna do a ready, readiness here. Now you guys see here, um, these are the readiness monitors, which means if you gotta get your car to pass smog, you gotta get a green light on all of these. Yeah, we're gonna show some information here, all right? So give me a second here, okay? No coding, we're not gonna do any coding. I'm giving you that heads up right now. I don't know how to code on VCDS Lite, and this isn't the pro version, so we can't really code very much. But we're learning how to read VCDS Lite, how to use VCDS Lite, okay? So, if you got a car that's having issues passing smog, this will give you a generic readout, a proper generic readout of what sensors are not working correctly or they're getting ready to work. Um, so, like all mine are passed except for this uh, this uh, oxygen sensor. Now, this is the uh, the narrow band one. That one's disabled in my car, so this will never kick on. So, that will always be failed or incomplete, which is normal for my car because it's tuned that way. Um, there's another sensor, uh, where is it? Um, supposed to be another one in here. I don't know where it's at, but there's another sensor that's supposed to kick on. That's the one, that's my, my, my wideband sensor. That one's already set up and works correctly. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, that gives you, again, gives you really good information here. Now, the next one you guys want to get into, I agree, <laughs> is this right here. You'll see this right here. This is super important. So I'm going to get the car turned on so you guys can see what I mean. It might We might lose um, a connection for a moment, so I'll be right back.
if everything works the way it's supposed to, you should be able to go into measuring blocks, click on up, and you will see some information here. It tells you what we're looking at, okay? So this is a good um, uh, readout of information when you're working on a car. Um, my uh, my T uh, no no my uh, my Jetta TDI for some reason wasn't passing smog even though all my monitors passed. It's because I had an EGR system. Now uh, TDIs have EGRs, just so you guys know. Um, the EGR wasn't reading correctly. We were getting um, the wrong numbers. Uh, the demand and what was needed was off, so it wasn't passing. So I ended up calling my tuner. And uh, he ended up retuning it correctly uh, for uh, for less uh, smoke coming out of the exhaust, so I can pass smog, and that was it. I was able to re uh, get my car back up and uh, pass smog and back up and rain the way I wanted it. Super cool. You're able to read all this information. I recommend you guys going through it and just playing around with what uh, information that you're going to see on here. You can read your voltages here, which is your alternator, if everything's coming in correctly. Yeah, you're welcome, Monroe. Um, it gives you RPMs. You're, if you're driving, you can check it. Um, it knows what gear you're in. I mean, all this stuff is extremely important when you guys um, pretty much get into diagnosing cars and playing around with cars a lot. Uh, there's an option here to log information. You can uh, start it and start saving it, and then you can save the file come back later and see the information done. Um, if you have a V-scope, uh, you can have this right here and it'll give you pretty much live readouts of what you're trying to read. This stuff right here, I don't know how to use extremely well. Uh, I'm not the best on doing this stuff. Um, what I'm good at is just understanding what I'm reading and what I'm looking for to diagnose my vehicle. Um, Again, the, for you guys, it's up to you and how you guys want to go about it and get, if you guys want to dig even deeper. On lesson two, we're going to do a little bit more, a little bit more deep diving into it. Um, again, if you have the option for recode adaptations for the throttle body, um, you can do like a, just a single reading if you want to. Um, your fault codes and your readiness, again, these are all super important. And this is just under the engine functionality. You guys still have to go into like say, where can we go? Where can we go? Uh, if you have an automatic ABS right here, this one's important. Uh, I'll explain this for you guys right now. Let me uh, turn off the car. Now, for you guys um, who have, like, say, need to do a brake system and everything, I think there is a basic setting. No. Let me double check here. Output test. No. I think you have to log into it so you can get into it, I think. So here we got we got to check engine. We got a code for the brake module. Um, a lot of times these codes again are deep dive codes. These are not codes that like you can get with a normal OBD2 reader. These codes are module specific, so you won't get like a P code like a P0131 and all that. These are the codes that you're gonna get that are like hard to find. They're like dealer codes, B codes. These codes are in depth. You need a big tool to do this uh, to get you to get read this information correctly and accurately and understand what's going on. So I do have a code on here. Let's assume I fix it and I'm done. I'm just going to clear it and it won't clear. <laughs> but if it does clear, it should clear. And then we're done, right? 
Um, on the right hand side right here where it says login, there is a special login for this. You can research it and find it. It's 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 out there. There's the, on the on the web. There's a couple of videos that just show you how to use that function. Um, so Mark Forrest, you have to if you want to properly uh, brake bleed your um, your car to do like a brake uh, like a full flush of your entire brake system, you need to be able to open up the ABS pumps. Okay, there's four pumps in there, one for each uh, brake, and those pumps when you when you break, when you bleed your system, sometimes they're open or sometimes they're closed, and you can't properly bleed the entire brake system because that pump only opens when you're in an ABS situation. So VCDS, if, when you log into it, um, again, look it up online. There's a couple of videos. I'll do some research myself and figure it out on my own so I can show you guys how to do it. Um, you can unlock the ABS module. You can open all four pistons inside that ABS module and bleed the system completely, which will allow you to, number one, properly purge your brake system and give your car like like brand new braking. It's, it's insane what happens when you put fresh fluid in your brake system, just FYI. Um, so when we're done, we're going to go back. And again, you guys have a lot of other functions in here. Um, my whole purpose today was to get you guys started. This is lesson one, to get you started in how to understand VCDS and how to get your cable and your laptop fun functioning, okay? So everybody who's a Patreon member should have got this laptop. Now, if you didn't receive a laptop, I know people were asking, hey, I didn't get my laptop. Uh, we need to talk. We need to figure out who didn't get one, and we're going to ship you guys out a laptop, okay? Um, the way that it works, if you guys didn't get one, pretty much we send you an invoice and you pretty much pay for shipping. That's it. There's nothing else. Now, for Patreon members, I'm going to get a handful of very, very special versions of my laptop. And I'm going to show you guys right now. Give me a second. Be right back. We are going to have a contest for these right here. This right here. This is called a Panasonic Tough Book. If you guys don't know what these are, these are pretty much uh, commercial grade tablets that are designed to take a beating and pretty much are water resistant. Um, and pretty much are as rugged as you can get for a laptop for something that you guys, if you guys want to further your education with VCDS Lite, we're going to be giving some of these out, okay? I have about <clears throat> roughly 10 of these, and there's going to be a contest. We're going to have a contest on my YouTube side and for Patreon. So Patreons, we're going to have the ability to give you guys five of these, okay? On YouTube, same thing. We're going to have five of these given away on YouTube. Um, these things are legit. If you guys don't know what these are, look them up. Panasonic Tough Books. These things are freaking dope. Um, Full-blown PC in the palm of your hand, okay? Uh, industrial, I mean, they're completely rugged. You can pretty much throw them in your bag. If you need your friend to help you out and you need to code something really quick, this will, this will do it, okay? Uh, we're going to have two different flavors of these. We're going to have like one that's like the six, seven-inch version of this, and we're going to have a nice 10-inch version as well. The 10-inch version is going to have like an Intel i3 or i5, 8 gigs of RAM, um, Yep, they have Wi-Fi built into them. Um, they have a battery as well. Like I said, they these are pretty dang rugged. They have water seals everywhere. They're pretty gnarly. Um, I have a bunch. Like again, I have a bunch of these. 
brand new in the box. This thing is probably, it's, it's old, don't get me wrong. This is not like a brand new unit that came out last year. These are like five years old from my company that I work for. And they have no more use for them. So we got a box of brand new ones in the box, like sealed in the box. We have no use for them. So we're going to be giving these away. But again, the contest will be coming up very soon. I don't have any details about it. All I know is I came up on these and I want to give these out and I want to give them to you guys. All right. Um, I do have a couple other things that I got to give you guys a heads up. My hand. Um, this is one another reason why I haven't been able to be doing content. I still can't use a mouse. Um, my hand's still pretty bad. Uh, cause I broke my wrist. If you guys follow me at all, but, uh, so you see here, like my hand is solid right here. There's like no bump. Here's my other hand. You can see my little bump and you can see all my knuckles and everything. But this hand you guys can see. So, uh, my arm got lost a lot of muscle, uh, de you know, degeneration because of uh, uh, the accident. So I broke my wrist here. So I can explain to you, you know, why I've not been able to get back up and running and getting a lot of stuff done because it's difficult. It is very difficult for me to to do anything. Um, yeah, I got. I can. I can move my hands. I can move my hand just like my other hand, but not as well, but I can move it. Um, my my hand cannot make a fist. I can probably get to there. This is like, hold on. Yeah, that's like the extent of my fist making here, you know, in comparison to this, you know, big difference. Uh, I need to be able to make this. Um, so I started physical therapy. I'm hoping next week. Um, so, Beard, yeah, I'm gonna get ready to get ready to get rid of this. I shaved last time with my left hand, and I ruined my face. So uh, I gotta go pay someone out to, uh, to get my face all dialed in, cause man, my facial hair is like rough. <laughs> um, my scar goes from here all the way to here, so it's about three to almost almost three four inches long. Um, So uh, there's a metal plate about they big, it's about two inches big, five screws. So I, like I said, I destroyed my wrist. Like my wrist is just wrecked. Um, so um, because of that, we got other things going on at home. But the good thing is I'm in good health. I'm not having any issues in general with life. Life is amazing. I'm enjoying my children, my wife, my home. I'm enjoying you guys, um, but again, I am very slow uh, making content. Um, so uh, today, lesson one, I hopefully was a success for all you guys. This will be back up on the channel later today to walk you through again VCDS Lite. Um, so uh, tomorrow, we're going to have some more content. We're going to... Tomorrow, uh, lesson, I'm not going to do lesson two tomorrow. Um, trying to figure out what we can do tomorrow. Um, I don't know, I have to think, I have to sleep on it today. Um, but again, if you guys are enjoying this, uh, especially this kind of lessons, we're going to do more of this. So, stupid mosquitoes. Um, but again, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you at the bottom of my heart. I appreciate all the kind comments, the great spirit, you know, the, the get well soon and all that. I appreciate it. I appreciate it very, very much. And I won't stop, you know. I don't watch football, so you guys can enjoy it. <laughs> um, oh, one big thing, one big, big, big thing. Binchy has dropped weight. I am down almost 30 pounds. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm down 30 pounds. So I used to weigh at 230 pounds. I'm down to 200. I'm bouncing up and down from 200 to 202 to 199, you know, but I'm trying to go even further. So 
Um, I try not to give you guys a lot. Um, it's, yeah, it just turned 5 o'clock. So, um, I don't like to give a lot of people, you know, information about my life and what's going on because, you know, things happen. And, but, but I'll give you guys this. I do have some heart issues, unfortunately. So this is why I'm pushing really hard with my health, my weight, and my spirit, and my, um, just me. <laughs> so, sorry, I get a little emotional because it's scary. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting problems with my heart. So, you know. It's scary shit because the doctor's like, hey, you need to stop whatever you're doing. You're pretty much killing yourself, you know, the food that you're eating and all that. And it's one of those things that, <laughs> you know, I keep still doing this. I still want to keep doing PTL's Garage. I still want to do my computer stuff. I still want to do my t-shirt stuff. I, want to, I still want to do a lot of stuff. So I have to drop my weight. I have to drop a lot of stuff. So I can keep doing this. So if there are days you guys say, hey, why aren't you commenting on Patreon or Facebook or anything? Because I'm trying to reserve myself. You guys got to understand, you know, us being guys in general, it's hard for us to express feelings. It's hard for us to express how we uh, hurt and stuff like that because we're dudes. Women will understand that, you know. So us as guys, you guys, you should understand when, when I don't want to say anything or talk about anything, give me the patience, please. You know, hit me up later. You know, um, I won't stop making content. I'm telling you that day, until the day I die, there will be content. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's just won't be as consistent as I would love it to be. Um, so, I'm going to do the best I can and for the best for you guys and myself, obviously, and my family. Um, but bear with me. I will be always around. Don't worry. And if I ever do go, you got my YouTube channel. <laughs> keep watching content. Keep enjoying. And as always here, I beat you out garage. If you see another dubber on the road, give a thumbs up. Give a deuces. And always, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. Peace out, everyone, and you guys have yourself a wonderful day. All right? Deuces.